we please wait till after the show? Okay, you had a question. Stay right there, stay right there. I'll come up there. You, you, you. Yeah? Guess what? You're one more. Can I take my shoes off? That's the question. <laughs> you sitting in the audience listening to us talk about what happens after the wedding how many married people in here oh my gosh <laughs> overwhelmed so you did you agree disagree or did anybody was anybody completely blissful the whole time after <laughs> oh okay <laughs> you gonna, what, 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 what were you thinking what were you thinking huh yeah you're talking about directly after the wedding or for nine years since we've been married? Uh, directly after the wedding. Directly after the wedding, we realized that there was a shift in the relationship. And so it, it shifted up. There was, there was kind of the blending of the two personalities. But for the most part, we were very committed to making it work and also excited about all the possibilities in front of us. Uh-huh. So. And you've been together nine years now? Nine years, yeah. 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 I, I think, too, that, that living together made a huge difference for us because we were aware of everything you know we were living together we were we you know like everybody said you, you know their habits everything about them and so the day-to-day -day is is really key to experience before marriage so you don't have that letdown mm -hmm. we, went, we went back into our lives and the other key I think is the plan really is to is to we continue my husband is a chronic planner and <laughs> we plan and we did have a plan after the wedding to see friends and to continue the excitement after the wedding when we got back and to share everything. So yeah. I think well, that's Well, that's key. what Leanne said. They did not have a plan. You didn't have a plan. We didn't have a plan. And, and we that's why lost. you had such a big letdown. We were, we were very lost at that time. Lost. We had a plan right at just when the honeymoon ended. And then after that, it was all, you know, I mean, because we spent a full year planning the wedding, the honeymoon. And it, right afterwards, you get home and there's no more plan. There's no more, you know, you're just. No one told us before that, hey, plan for after. Yeah. You know, we, we just were so caught up in the dress and the, you know, families all the come day. together. The day, the day, the day. So we've made yeah. some amends and I sold my wedding dress and we're going on holiday and we're going to start over. Really? We've got lots of plans ahead, yeah. Yeah. How long have you been married now? Four months. Four months. <laughs> We're hoping things really work out for you. <laughs> Just continue on that path that you're on now. Four months, four months. You guys are three years, so right? You yes. guys were three years, yes. okay. And? You know, I just wanted to say one thing. I think that the bad times in a marriage is when you really get to know the person that you're with. Because uh, when we were going through our transitions, I used to think, oh, my God, he's so insensitive, and he really, you know, maybe he doesn't care. And then I would talk to him, and he'd say, no, you know, I just didn't understand what you were saying or what you were feeling, and you didn't communicate that to me. How was I supposed yeah, to know? Yeah, because you expected him to know, because yeah. he's your husband. Right? Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> he exactly. has that title. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. You were going to say what? Well, I was going to say that uh, among the couples that I interviewed who unfortunately ended up divorced, there was this thing that was sort of like the six-month itch, where within six months, people really felt like there were huge problems. And, and so when I heard her say three months, I was like, uh-oh, you know, I mean, I hope that... Four. They're four. Four. Four months. Okay. <laughs> unfortunately, still falling in that window, but that there are... Um, I think that reality hits pretty fast. Um, whether it's that once you walk out of the church or the synagogue or the town hall or within the next few weeks, there's a definite what you called, I think, a honeymoon hangover. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had a friend it hit the day. Uh, he, he didn't go home after the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> like, it hit so, like, he just wouldn't go home. He just wouldn't go. Yeah, and, and what about that itch? Well, both of you talk well, about it. I want to say that a lot of that can be avoided. A lot of I that thought it was a seven-year itch. Now it's six <laughs> months. <laughs> We're moving fast. Okay. Like the ninety percent statistic of post-bridal depression, a lot of that can be avoided if couples are more in reality during the engagement. Yeah. yeah. So the the extent of the fantasy is the extent of of the letdown. Yeah, I would say so. That just go, that's why that is such an alarming statistic because it shows how many people it's a com total complete fantasy. Complete fantasy. Yeah, because there was no plan. There was no plan and there was no real work during the engagement pre-wedding. There was just the, the belief that perfect wedding equals perfect marriage.
Okay. And you were saying, too, and you say this in the, your book, that, that most people think the engagement is about the planning of the wedding. Right. When really the engagement is for? For recognizing that you are in a transition, for recognizing that you're no longer the single guy or the single girl, and being willing to let go of that identity, which means having conversations with mother or father or people that you're particularly attached to in this identity of being single, that there are ties that are loosened. There's a separation that's happening. There is a letting go. Mm -hmm. That's the true work. And there's fear. It's scary to get married today. Um, and there are expectations about what does it mean to be a husband and to be a wife. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the real issues that are going to make a good marriage so that when you're laying that foundation, people talk about laying it in the first year, mm -hmm. you're actually laying it way before that first year, right. during the engagement, so that you can enter your wedding and your marriage on a solid, healthy foundation, and then start to deal with, you know, the deeper pushing button issues. Yeah, how can I get through to you? Right. Yes. <laughs> Thank heaven and... Praise the yeah. Lord. Tammy Faye visits Isaac, and she's bringing makeup. Individual lashes. God bless mascara. Why trick or treat when you can settle in and get your thrills? Grab yourself a hot shower, a comfy nighty, and hunker down for Oxygen's Hitchcock Halloween. Ow. Am I acting as if there's something wrong? Frankly, yes. Curl up for a whole day of Hitch's creepy movie madness. We all go a little mad sometimes. A man should have a hobby. Plus, kooky, spooky episodes of all your favorite Oxygen shows. Alrighty then. Get your tricks with Hitch this Halloween. Watch Psycho and the Birds all day Thursday. It's good to know there's one person you can share your most intimate thoughts and feelings with. Hi, Sue. Hello, you got a question. Yeah. Now you can talk to Sue Johansson live. It's Talk Sex. Get answers to your questions about sex and relationships. Thanks for your call. Talk Sex, premiering Sunday at midnight, only on Oxygen. My new favorite color? Brown sugar number 63. From Garnier Nutrice, of course. Luxurious lasting color that's soft. You just gotta touch it soft. More than a simple cream, it's a conditioning mask. Nutrice combines fragrant fruit oil with permanent color in a mask, then deep treats with nourishing conditioners right down to the heart of your hair. For rich lasting color and gray, you're 100% covered. Garnier Nutrice. In 30, try something new shades. Garnier, trust them, they're experts. Blues the color of the sky in the morning when we rise. Green's the color of the sparkling corn in the morning when we rise. In the morning when we rise, that's the time I love the best. She's a gorgeous woman. <laughs> and I love her through thick and thin. It's good to know that you have somebody that's there for you no matter what. Michelle lost the weight for herself. She didn't lose it for me. The Slim Fast Plan helped me take control of my life. It was just so simple, so easy. It has vitamins, minerals, and it's so delicious. She feels good about herself, and that sort of radiates to the rest of us. It's just wonderful. I live life in both bodies, and I just like the view from here. <laughs> Slim Fast. It's your life. Feed it right. Well, one of the things I heard Tracy say that got my ears up, which is something you hear a lot from women, is I didn't talk to him because I didn't think I needed to. Yeah. You know, that sort of Cinderella thing of, it, it, along with the perfect dress and the perfect wedding, the perfect husband is somebody that you don't have to have any disagreements about or have to say, I really would like flowers. Would you please get me some? They're supposed to just know that. Yeah. And I think... Because it seems to diminish it once you have to say, would you yeah. get me some flowers? Oh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, would you get me some flowers, please? Yeah. And I prefer orange russet roses to... Uh, yeah, go ahead. Well, but I think that idea really has been part of disempowering women. The reality is that if you want something in your marriage, particularly if you want stuff that guys haven't been trained to know how to give you, then it is unromantic to say this, but it does work. Yeah. You're going to have to teach that guy, this is, how, this is what you're going to need to yeah. do to please so, Yeah, so you could say, every now and then, I would like for you to do something spontaneous mm -hmm. that lets me That's know it. you were just thinking about me. That's it. Yeah, yes, yes, back there. Hi. Everybody keeps saying the plan, and nobody keeps saying what the plan is. That's true. Yeah. 
So what's the plan? I mean, I, I'm happy finally. <laughs> what's the plan? <laughs> yeah, what should the plan be? Well, I think the plan is the rest of your life. I mean, mm. there is something about when you come off of a big public ritual. Yeah. Whether it's a funeral or a wedding or uh, a baptism, there is a sort of, like you produce this great theater and then you have the letdown and that's all part of it. So you can ease into, uh, be a little easier on yourself than we've been surrounded with 100 people and now we're all alone. It could be, well, maybe we're going to kind of break into it, have some friends over, whatever. But the bottom line is, at the end of the day, what you, it's going to end and you are going to be left with your life. Right. So there is no real plan that's going to protect you from this. Right. You're shaking your head, David, because our bigger picture, I guess you can call it, instead of the plan, was just to kind of separate our life before wedding and the wedding day and the future. And part of what we wanted to do was say, hey, okay, great, you know, we really don't have ties to that day anymore. It was our day, we have the pictures, we have the video, we have the family memories, but um, now we're making the foundation for our future. And that's kind of... It's our way of also separating. We have very close family ties and, and we're a family now and we want to start off just the two of us. Mm -hmm. And not, you know, we had that whole community and the whole wedding, and now it's just the two of us, and we really want to spend some time together and talk about these issues that we didn't have time to talk about. Okay, you're shaking your head, Cheryl, because... because what she's talking about is, is, is creating the new family and separating from family of origin, and that's such a big issue for so many marriages mm -hmm. are the in-laws that, that come by unannounced and, you know, <laughs> and haven't let go. Mm -hmm. So that's, again, part of what needs to be recognized during the engagement is that... Um, you know, it's conscious bride, it's also conscious mother of the bride and mother of the groom and everybody is letting go or they should be instead mm -hmm. of worrying about, you know, a thousand dollar limousine or a twelve hundred dollar limousine that the father is writing out the check. No, let's talk about what's really going on, which is the letting go so that in that first year of marriage, the couple can focus on the couple and not be trying to, you know, deal with with the family who won't let go. Yes. I, I totally disagree. I mean, I think that it is important to, you know, that, that your priority should be your spouse. But I think that um, marriage cannot survive in a vacuum and that the more ties you have to family and friends and the more support systems you have, and the more you're able to turn to those people and that they're able to offer you advice without feeling like they're intruding or criticizing, the more likely your marriage is to survive. I agree. And I don't mean saying goodbye forever. I'm never going to speak to you again. Absolutely welcome the community and the support. Essential. But to recognize that, that the married couple is now number one for each other. Right. That the allegiance has been transferred from daddy to husband or from mommy to wife. See, I, I think that that is what a wedding does. That, that is... That's what it's supposed to do. That's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to be a, a transforming ritual. It, yeah, it really doesn't. <laughs> but that's really. what it's supposed that's to do, but it supposed supposed to doesn't. To but, do. but you know what? Right. Because and, 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 I think that's why you're right, that there needs to be conscious mother-in-laws, conscious mm -hmm. mothers, conscious because... A lot of people, they go, they're sitting there crying about the whole thing, and it's right. so beautiful, and then still can't let go. Still right. expect mm -hmm. you to be the same right. son right. you always were, right. the same daughter you always were, and right. come with their preconceived expectations of right. what the daughter-in-law is supposed to be. Exactly. Yeah. You're shaking your head because? We, we had transitions with that, you know, with, with um, our parents. You know, they felt, you know, we should still come over like we used to and they they get offended because when you tell them look mom look dad you have to back off a little bit they tend to feel like oh my god you know you hate us now that you're married you know now you got and married you know you got you, the big head exactly <laughs> <laughs> and, and they don't understand that you need to go through a transformation of blending your life with this other person yeah, one of the things that I wanted to add on to what Tracy was saying is you need friends and family and other people, but you have to solidify your relationship first. And yes. you have to know that your relationship takes priority. Yeah, that's what Leanne and David are saying else. they want to do. Right. And, yeah. and then, then once that happens, then everything else becomes easier. Yeah. We hate to be bossy, but we really do know what's best. Isaac is on his way, followed by the Sunday Night Sex Show. See, we told you. The falling leaves drift by the window. The autumn leaves of red and gold. Sunday on Oxygen. There's a kind of adolescent 
thing about trying to chase girls. Ben Affleck talks with Carrie Fisher on Conversations from the Edge, Sunday at 10. When I was a kid, being a redhead made me feel different. Now it's one of the things that makes me, me. Revlon High Dimension Hair Color. So precise it only takes 10 minutes to deliver rich, beautiful color. Revlon High Dimension Hair Color. 10 minutes to beautiful. Right now, fly Southwest Airlines for just $39 to $99 each way when you purchase by November 7th. So get packing. You are now free to move about the country. Why do my craft singles taste so good? Because every single one is filled with magic. Just follow me. It's the Dairy Fairy who waves her magic wand and mixes milk, magic, and fun. Two out of three kids don't get the recommended amount of calcium. Luckily, when they eat Kraft Singles, they're getting calcium they need and the taste they love. That's why America spells cheese K-R-A-F-T. And now try new Kraft Rip'ems. American cheese strips you rip. transforming and I think that one of the dangers about marriage is to think of it as this sort of transformative act that sort of everything changes after you get married but the reality is especially for couples that have lived together or have been together a long time the relationship you have before you get married is the relationship you're gonna have after you get married and the person you are beforehand is who you're going to be afterwards and even though people will deny it and they say oh I didn't expect anything to change or you know I knew that he wouldn't get better when you really talk to them you hear things like well I thought that you know once he was really committed to the relationship he'd become more responsible about money or whatever mm -hmm. and people have these expectations that things will change so I think the less we think about marriage as this transformative experience the more realistic our expectations one are. of the things you say in uh, the conscious bride is that everything what did you say everything change everything changes nothing and nothing changes, changes. and everything yes. changes nothing so, changes right. and, and everything. everything changes the relationship Would agree with that nothing changes and everything changes well, that's the other reason why you can't plan for these things because I think exactly everything changes that you don't expect will change mm -hmm. we sort of think that once we get married you know you get the 2.2 beautiful children who go to the perfect schools and the colonial house and the grandparent children and everything kind of falls out of that and nobody expects that oh my husband might get depressed or I could lose a job or he could get offered you know to be transferred to Phoenix and those are all things that could change and the we don't most things it. I think people should expect is it gonna push every button that you have every yes. <laughs> yes. that it that's what it's there yeah. for it's yeah. to yeah. Well, what, what I that's say, what the spiritual growth is that's what, what I say to people is. is you every day people have gone by who wouldn't push all those buttons and you know what they're not the people you're attracted to. Right. It's about your fate. We pull into us the people who are going to send us back to our unfinished business. With your childhood. With the possibility that once we're back, we can do something different there. Mm -hmm. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. Yes, ma'am, in red. I, I, I listened to you say you don't change or that ev everything stays the same. We're married 11 years. I was 23 when we got married. I am a totally different person at 34 than I was at 23 and our relationship is very strong we have two wonderful children i don't have the point two but we've got the two <laughs> you know <laughs> we're an interfaith couple we've had a lot to deal with we have an autistic child it's hard it's real life you know marriage is not easy and i think that's what most people forget and it does change every single day it's a struggle yes. and i definitely agree with that and i think that's one of the i mean one of the most important statistics out there is the older you are when you get married actually the more likely your marriage is to last and particularly after the age of 30 because as you say when you're 22 and even 28 your life is you know in constant flux and you don't know where you're gonna be five years yeah. from now. We certainly hope you've changed since 23 because 23 you're just trying to figure out who am I and what does this all mean? Your producers before the show and I did a little one of those little tape pieces and I said I'm not so sure I'm comfortable going on TV and letting people know who I was at 23 it, it was very humbling for me to look back at that person and say, 
oh my God, how naive, how stupid, how delusional. You know, I listened to you say, is it really going to be that different? And I was like, yes, I wanted to shake you. I said to my husband, I want to shake her. Um, it is that different. Well, okay. that would have been a great moment on What's TV. So <laughs> I'm one That's of those never people. happened. That would be a great moment if she just speaking. You just started uh. shaking. <laughs> yeah, but it, she feel you feel that it's not going to be that different because you guys have lived together. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that nothing's going to change or that you know our relationship won't change, and that as we get older and things change, we have children or whatever it may be that that we're not going to be different people than we are today. But at the same time, how old are you right now? 26. 26. Okay. At, but at the same time. A week or two after we get married, are we really going to? Well, are you going to? I'll we, just tell you, a decade makes a huge yeah, difference. So I agree with that. I just am yeah. saying. Um, God knows I think we're also saying that <laughs> your life is inevitably going to change. Oh, you didn't right. have kids at 23, yeah. so that's a life-changing event. So of course your relationship is going to change. But I agree. he's still yeah. the same person he was, yeah. and you're still the same person. I don't think I am. I guess that's, yeah. I'm not so sure that either one of us are the same people, you know? See, I, if I were, if I, I, I just, you know, I know this is America, we all get to make our own choices, thank God for that, but I just think the 20s are too young. Definitely. Yeah. Because yeah. the 20s are too young. Because you don't, I, I look back, you know, I've kept a journal since I was 15, and I look back at my journal when I was 22, 25, 26, Pathetic, pathetic, <laughs> just pathetic. I, I want to weep at the woman I used to be. Pathetic, just pathetic. And so those 20s are the years where you're trying to figure out for yourself, who am I and what kind of stand am I going to take in the world? Very different than when your mother was in her 20s, when yeah. the expectation was you marry somebody, they're going to take care of you, you don't like what they're doing, what they're saying, you just press that down and keep moving, girl. Thank heaven and praise the yes. Lord. Tammy Faye visits Isaac and she's bringing makeup. Individual lashes. God bless mascara. Sometimes I dream. Mario Frangulas. Sometimes I dream. The romantic debut album from the voice America's been waiting for. What you'll see next on Oprah after the show. I was wondering if I can get a hug from Dan. Old woman! Dear God, I hope you got a photograph of that. <laughs> Blushing all the way down to your kneecaps. Nothing scripted, nothing's rehearsed. I'm just flying by the seat of my pantyhose. Join me tomorrow on Oxygen. of and aware of the reality of what it really is instead of this entire um, fantasy that we've been fed and bred on, literally. I mean, the fact that Tracy started out her piece and hundreds of other people over the years we've talked to, they always talk about Prince Charming. That is a story. It's a made-up story. There is no such thing. You know, it's interesting because during the commercial break, Terry said that he has a lot of sympathy for people. What were you saying? Well, okay, okay. I don't want to get into too much trouble here. But what I, what I said was, well, this is how I say it because I do think it's, what I think is that we, we long for perfection. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. as human beings, we have a profound emotional longing for perfection. The issue is that he or she ain't that. We're, you know, we're kind of longing, we're looking for perfection in the wrong places, if you will. And we have, a re the, the myth is that we can really achieve perfect happiness and perfection in our relationship with each other. What, what I say is relationships are not going to make us happy. That's the myth. Relationships are going to complete us and make us happy. Relationships are like our home. They're the place that you get to be happy and unhappy in. It's better to be face those ups and downs in a home than homeless, but the relationship itself is just where you are. 
Yeah. It's, it's not going to fill you and up. And what you said earlier, too, which is, I think, Harville Hendricks, Harville Hendricks, who wrote the Getting the Love You Want, the whole Imago theory, Great is that you are going to automatically, you all will think about this when you go home, you are going to attract to you, that is like a fact, attract to you the person who is best going to help you to heal your emotional baggage and stuff of the past. That's yeah, just say, the way it works. I say we all marry our unfinished business. It's your unfinished business. It's your unfinished business that has an opportunity to get finished in the marriage. Yes. And if you just knew that, then I think that would make a whole lot of difference. Yes. I think it would make a whole lot of difference. Yes, over here. I, hope I just love you. I love you. I really do. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Except the love. I, I wanted Thank to you. say that for me, I've, I've been married for seven years. I had an anniversary on September the 16th, and for me, it's still the honeymoon. I tell my husband I love him each and every day. Be you have to kind of train the men, see? <laughs> before, before he hangs up, I can talk to him 10 times, but he's going to tell me the last three words is, I love you, and I'm going to tell him I love him. And you have to do things to, to keep your relationship filled with love. You have to give him a card in his lunch. You have to, you know, Cap him on his butt. You have to do different things <laughs> to show how much you love, and you keep that. You know, you keep that love going, but it takes a lot of work. So if you want to get married and you want to stay married, you have to work at it. It's, it but it's a good feeling when you work at it. Yes, yes, yeah. What I have to say is I agree with all the misconceptions. You know, you have the fairy tale wedding. The first year of marriage, I dated my um, husband six years before I got married. And the first year of marriage, it was a shock because it was just so difficult. But you don't think that the difficulty is going to be there. Then you go on to have your children, and my first son is severely handicapped physically and mentally, and you don't think. It just, right. I think life just throws you these curves. And before you, I never spoke about handicapped children or, you know, having difficulties in any such way before you got but married. But did you say for better or for worse? I did. Yeah. And, but I don't, you, you do think of it that way, but. Richer, poor, sickness, and health. Yes, yes. Commitment. It's commitment. Those vows you said. Yeah. <laughs> I did say All right, it. Then. And well, I truly, that's what it means. It I means, truly. It, you know, they should have a line in there about in any curve that life might throw. That's you. it. <laughs> I, you know what? I agree. Today's my 15-year anniversary, and I and I absolutely am deeply in love with them. But I think what I will tell my daughter is, um, you think it's so perfect right now. There's going to be parts where you're going to be on the ground, yeah. and then there's going to be parts where you're up in the sky. Yeah. Everybody, thank you. I wish I had time for all your questions, but thank you.